I've got Nick Coram here, and I'm super excited to announce mm -hmm. that he is going to share some straight up fire with us today. And I hope you guys are ready because he is a total badass agency owner that has managed to figure out how to not only keep clients, but get them upsold on bigger packages, which is totally crazy and exciting. Um, definitely let us know what challenges that you're having with uh, your digital advertising agency and any clients um, that you've either been struggling to get results for or struggling to keep active with you and also uh, prevent from panicking and freaking out. Because I think a very simple title for this uh, presentation or this uh, live could easily be how to deal with clients who are panicking and freaking out and looking to pause but don't have any other clear action plan in place because mm -hmm. that's pretty much the scope of every conversation <laughs> we've been having for the last uh, few days now. Um, I would love to know before we get uh, too deep in everything because I'll definitely go on tangents and uh, share some cool stuff that I've been discovering um, having more hands-on conversations with our existing clients and people who uh, either want to work with us or uh, want to work with us and want to delay their start date or want to get started with us and start immediately working with us, but on a slightly different offer. Um, I'll share some of the cool things that we've been doing to have more conversations and more meaningful conversations with our existing clients and better understand what I'd label as product market fit. Uh, if anybody hasn't already become blatantly aware over these last few days, uh, doing lead generation and helping to get new booked appointments and clients who show up and buy at brick and mortar businesses might not be the most appealing thing to sell and offer right now when brick and mortar businesses are closing their doors left and right. So what the heck do you do when a client says to you, I can't work with you or we need to pause things immediately? while I'm just trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Uh, has anybody been dealing with that quite a bit? Am I missing the mark on the conversations that you're having with your clients? Um, I'm looking for more clients in the thread. Give us a, Christine, have you been talking with all the other agency owners that you serve for your high level stuff? You and David doing the amazing work uh, that you're doing here. Amazing work. I don't know why Thank I said you. that. <laughs> um, what kind of challenges have they been recently dealing with? I wonder if they're exactly the same ones we've been going through or if they're radically different. Yeah. Catherine says, yes, everyone. <laughs> everyone yeah. is wanting to pause. Okay. That's, that's kind of what people have been saying in our group. So I posted yesterday, how many of you have clients who asked to pause and yeah. everyone's replying, you know, they have at least one, but some people like Catherine said, all of them which has got to be scary and confusing and <laughs> overwhelming at the same time. Got it. So I think, and we'll just dive into it. Um, I think one piece of advice that I wish, um, so for those who don't know me, I'm Nick. Um, my business partner and I, Brett Watts, we run Patient Rhino. Uh, that's Brett's branding. He has been in the agency game for over three years, uh, myself as well. And we recently joined forces um, collectively over the last few years. We've been serving anywhere from 40 to 65 plus offices uh, around the USA who specialize in Botox, injectables and fillers, uh, body contouring, you know, things where they want to tighten up the skins around certain parts of their body or just uh, shed inches. Um, we have basically been serving them at the highest level we possibly can. And what we've been finding as of late uh, with the COVID and coronavirus pandemic, uh, basically everybody is needing to shut their doors. Um, either they're mandated by their state and their governor, or they are recognizing that every other non-essential business has been forced to close their doors. So they're essentially following suit. Um, and if they haven't already, they're going to in the next three to seven days. So the challenge is, as uh, Megan Dyer says, what's up, Megan? Um, she says, I have a client who does event rentals, wedding stuff. Um, only one client wanted to pause. Thank God. Fantastic. So it seems like everybody else is still pushing forward. For the majority of our offices who are looking to pause, we have found one amazing question to ask and start a conversation that is more meaningful to help us understand what gaps and challenges are you going to have in the next six weeks and how can we co-create a solution to solve them? And the one powerful question that I've got, which if you haven't asked every single one of your offices yet what their game plan is for this, um, this is definitely the question to ask. What are you going to do to generate new sales in the next 45 days? 
So we've been consistently asking this over and over and having different variations of that same question being asked over and over and over. What are you going to do, whether your office is closed or not, going to do to generate new book deployments and sales or cash flow over the coming weeks? Um, the question that I've been asking and how I've been phrasing it for a lot of offices that we work with is, how are you going to generate cash flow while your doors are closed? And basically, Christine, every office has responded the exact same way. I have no idea. <laughs> like, I don't have a game plan in place. I don't have any strategy in place. I don't know what the next few weeks are going to look like. And you, as somebody who's asking that position from, or I'm sorry, that question from a position of servitude and authority, you're going to be presenting yourself on this call as somebody who's already crafting a solution to a problem that they haven't been articulating that they actually have yet. Because they've been asking themselves this sort of a question in different ways over the past two weeks in particular. Um, and I have been taking diligent notes every time I ask this question on a call because my goal is to help us both hop on a call, articulate their problem together, get them to clarify how much they this problem is hurting, um, and then specifically co-create a solution together. And out of this process over and over and over again, I've basically come up with uh, three separate offers in addition to the done for you marketing that we're doing. Um, and I'd like to talk a little bit about those on this call. But now that we have uh, 30 people watching, throw a hashtag new offer <laughs> in the chat if you're interested in hearing about uh, basically what we're doing to come up with a new offer, come up with a new way to serve a lot of the offices that we're already working with and doing it in a more relevant way, specifically understanding what their challenges are going to be over the next few weeks. Um, shout out to Chris for coming up with a fantastic comment here. My demise was my current, uh, my recurring payment notification. A couple of clients said they did not receive that alert that they probably would not have paused their services so soon, dope. So here's the exact challenge that I think I had and still am having over the last few days, it's that we aren't being hands-on and proactive enough with every single one of our existing clients to start the conversation and come from a position of proactive solution-oriented conversations that we wanna have with people. So people have been wanting to get on calls with us saying, hey, we need to cancel, like not necessarily we want a refund, but we wanna pause things. I've been getting on those calls and asking that one question right off the bat, what's your strategic plan to generate cash flow while your doors are closed over these next 30, 45 days? Every office has iterated some combination of the exact same response where I don't know, I don't have a plan in place. All I know is that I'm gonna be struggling to pay my bills. Um, I don't have a play, plan in place to make money while closed. And then what we've been navigating people to is, well, what are you gonna be doing to offer virtual consults instead? So basically the offer that we're helping a lot of offices take action on right now is how do you essentially stand up a remote version of, in this case, your medical spa or your clinic or your office? And how do you transition to doing virtual sales? So this is the first offer and the most immediate offer that is something that we're coming up with. Um, it's still fluid. We've certainly helped other offices uh, improve their presence online, but now virtually, how do you basically have Zoom calls like this? Um, how do you sell over a, a video call or at least ask people, you know, hey, can you um, hop on a Zoom call with me so we can shift to doing a virtual video consult instead of doing one face-to-face? -face? And then ultimately, how do we collect deposits? Like how do we take payment over a video consult like this? that ultimately generates cash flow for every single business that we work with while their doors are closed. So one challenge that I know that I have had over the last couple of weeks, and I think our team as a whole has had, is anytime a client comes to you expressing, hey, we need to stop or we need to pause or we need to cancel for the time being, immediately hop on the phone with them. And even more so, if you haven't actually contacted and proactively called up every single one of your clients, get them on the phone now and be proactive. Hey, Christine, you know, it's been great serving you for the last six weeks. What's up, Zach Nassbaum, Matt, Chris Levitt, throw a hashtag social distancing if you're at least six feet away from the nearest human being on planet Earth right now. <laughs> uh, what I recognize we should have been doing is we should have been more proactive by calling up every single one of our existing clients, by calling up every office that we work with, and at least 
even if we don't have a game plan, coming from a position of proactive clarity and understanding what next steps are and wanting to talk through them by asking a, a framed question, which is, what is your game plan to still have cash flow in the next 30 to 45 days? And from this and from consistently asking the question, we're better understanding our product market fit with what offices need, what we're already offering. What's up, Jordan? Um, comment social distancing if you and Katie are at least six feet from each other right now while the Real Beauty Boss team is still bossing it up and delivering value to all your clients that you also coach on. Um, our goal is to always just have the best possible understanding of what their challenges are right now and walk them to a solution that can help them pay their bills. Number one, a fear or doubt or concern that everybody is having right now. We don't know how we're gonna pay our bills while our doors are closed. Uh, number two, how can we make money while closed? Almost the same thing, just different language to define the problem. And then the third most consistent challenge that we're getting is we don't know how to do virtual consults and collect payment on those calls. So that's literally the program that we just came up with for offices who struggle to even spell Zoom. Uh, some offices can't even <laughs> get on a Zoom video call like this, so it's certainly challenging for, for them. And our goal is to step them through the process where you know, we, Christine, as an agency owner and somebody who serves as other agency owners, uh, we might not know the first thing about running a brick and mortar business. I can wholly attest to the fact that uh, if I were in charge uh, as like a COO or an operations manager or an office manager for a medical spa, I wouldn't know the first thing about how to meet with my team face-to-face, -face, uh, how to keep the place clean and organized, uh, which is something that every office now has to pay even more attention to, how to stay even more organized and clean. Uh, but I can certainly recognize that we've been doing hundreds and thousands of dollars in sales uh, over the past few years on a monthly basis, doing everything virtually. So I can certainly come from a position of authority and expertise saying, hey, you can't even spell Zoom and don't know how to set up Zoom calls. I can help stand up the process that you need to follow end to end to not only invite somebody to a Zoom call, but give somebody who you want to serve the opportunity to work with you now by putting a deposit on file and saying, hey, you know, this was a great five to 10 minute video consult. I can see that, you know, you're going to need a certain number of units of Botox injected here or here or some fillers here, maybe a little body contouring done here around the abdominal. But what I recognize is that I can't obviously inject you or take you through that process of that treatment until you actually walk into my office. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to lock in some of the special pricing that we presented on this phone call together. Would you like that? Does, does that make sense? Does, does what I'm offering make sense to you right now? The idea of paying like a fixed $50, $100, $200 deposit right now so that we can buy now, essentially reserve your spot and bank for later so that when you do come through us, uh, through our doors face to face and see us when we reopen in April or May or June, whenever that time may be, you still get to honor the special pricing. So when we've been beta testing this and coming up with this idea over and over and over again with our clients, again, due to the fact that we are being proactive, we are being hands-on, we're over communicating with our clients as much as possible, this is their feedback to us. We understand their struggles and their challenges. Uh, they don't have a game plan in place, so we've essentially helped them uh, walk through a solution that is gonna generate cash flow while their doors are closed, um, still allow them to make payroll and pay their team, uh, and also a separate offer, which I'll get to in just a second, is keep their marketing team engaged. You know, a lot of offices who are bigger have a marketing team. A lot of feedback that I don't know if other agency owners get is sometimes offices say, I can do what you're doing. This is easy. Facebook ads are easy. Click funnels is easy. High level is easy. Is it now? <laughs> I wish it were. We have to bust our ass to get you results every single day of the week. And uh, our team is, is very well trained up and uh, we're very competent. And we've you know, been spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in paid advertising just to get results for every office that we work with over the past few years. But other offices are saying, hey, now is the perfect time. While my marketing person is at home every single day, they have nothing else to do. Can we invest in getting them new skill sets to actually do this type of marketing themselves? So that's how we've been upselling the idea of working with us on either a $3,000 six-week program for coaching for the virtual sales, like how to you know, just set up this system where if people are scheduling on your calendar, they also get a Zoom invitation and a link to a deposit collection form 
everything is HIPAA compliant and making sure that they can hop on a virtual consult just like this, five, 10 minutes, okay, great. You know, I'm not gonna be able to deliver the service today, obviously, because we're remote, but I do wanna lock in some special pricing that we're only offering on these virtual consults to people who take action right now. If you don't take action on this right now, I do need to let you know that you're going to have to show up into our office and pay full price when you do actually walk through our doors in April, May. But if you want us to honor the special COVID March 2020 pricing that we've got for Botox and injectables or our high ticket body contouring, um, now is the time to act. One other bit of feedback that we got from offices who've worked with us is they say, Nick, I love the fact that you have this sort of a pitch deck, like a virtual presentation that you deliver on these calls. These are calls with our offices who don't yet work with us, but we're convincing them or presenting, you know, this is the value that we've delivered for other offices. This is how the system works. Do you like the system? Does this presentation make sense? They've said, Nick, that presentation was so fantastic that we want to figure out how can we do that and step people through their journey, uh, a weight loss journey or a body contouring journey or like an injectables journey where we can show before and after photos of all the results that we've delivered for people that we've helped in the past. And then in five, 10 minutes asking, you know, do you want to take action with us and get results like these and try to find a way to do this uh, together? And that's a really simple conversation and strategic conversation to have. What's up, David? Thanks for chiming in on your own Facebook Live and deciding to watch <laughs> while your business partner is handling stuff here. Um, Guys, let me know. I would love a little bit of engagement um, from everybody else who's watching. I want to give a shout out again to Jordan, Raul, long time no chat man, uh, David and Christine, obviously, Zach Nausbaum, nice to hear from you, Matt, Chris, Sissy, my dance partner, my future dance partner, Rose and Mildred. Um, if you are somebody who's having a lot of clients pause or request to pause right now, and you're not able to switch them to virtual consultations, or you're not able to switch them to another virtual coaching program, or you're not able to switch them to another high ticket uh, done with you program, uh, let us know in the comments below. Jeff says he loves it, or Joan says on behalf of Jeff that they both love it. Um, would love to know if Joan has actually started. Jeff says, tell him he's doing awesome. Jeff, you make me feel all kinds of special. Jeff, inside. we love you. We love you, man. Besos. Um, give us a hashtag social distancing to let us know if you're socially distancing yourself from us by not responding to our request for comments in the thread. <laughs> um, I'd love to get feedback from you, Christine. What has been the biggest challenge that you've been seeing a lot of agency owners have over the past uh, seven days in particular? Yeah, uh, I think the biggest challenge is that we've seen is that their clients are asking them to pause and we, uh, like I said, we asked in the group and then a lot of people said their clients asked them to pause and my response was, do you have a plan for how to handle this? And most of the people said, no, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to suggest. And I actually had uh, one of my clients that is a non-agency owner. He owns a med spa in Florida. He called me uh, on Sunday and he was like, hey, I, I need to pause my advertising. <clears throat> and I asked him, okay, well, why would you, you know, no problem, just why would you like to pause? And he said, well, I think it's irresponsible for me to continue advertising. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was interesting concern. I was able to talk him into yes. uh, running more brand awareness campaigns um, rather than just giving up. Uh, and he was open to that, but I thought that his response for the irresponsible was interesting. Yes. Great questions and great objections from somebody who's basically looking to pause. So my first suggestion is anybody who gets uh, that feedback from a client, whether it's via email or on a phone call saying, hey, we need to pause things. My immediate question in response is not, how are you going to handle these next 30 days? It's specifically, what are you going to do to generate cash flow in the next four weeks, six weeks? This is a more specific question that's designed to prompt an answer that clearly defines 99% of people are going to answer, I have no idea what I'm going to do. You positioning yourself as somebody now with so much more authority than them 
to advise on what their next steps are has has set you up for success. Um, whether or not you have an immediate plan in place, you do recognize that you now have a, a little bit of leverage in this conversation moving forward. Where if somebody comes to you and says, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do, I sit back like cat in the hat and think, hmm, <laughs> I must have a little bit more insight into their business than they do. I said, I think that's the very first challenge to have, uh, to have addressed up front. It's what are you specifically going to do to generate cash over the next 30 days? 90% plus, 90 plus percent of people are going to say, I don't know. Um, to follow up with that, I'll actually address this person's question in the group. Christine, um, they just mentioned, uh, what would you recommend for auto dealers? So right now, uh, an auto dealership, uh, a very open space, but still, you know, people are probably going to be practicing social distancing where they don't feel comfortable going to even an open car lot and having face-to-face -face conversations with people there. I'm not particularly familiar with the auto dealership, but I would still ask, Mike, um, for the, uh, what would you recommend for auto dealers? I would ask uh, the dealership owner or whomever you're communicating with, number one, what is your plan to generate cash in the next 30 days? Once they have given you data that recognizes they have absolutely no idea what they're going to do, you do need to ask a few more guided questions. I'm actually gonna pull up in our uh, Asana space here. I'm just gonna try to take a screenshot of this because I do wanna respect some of our data privacy here. And guys, give us a, a hashtag social distancing or give us a hashtag, mm, give us a hashtag cash flow because I think every office is gonna have these sorts of conversations revolving around uh, the inability to clarify exactly what they're going to do to determine their next steps. And while I'm pulling this up here, uh, give a shout out to Jeff Lopez, give a shout out to Brian. Jeff and Brian, what's up y'all? Um, I would say cash flow, hashtag cash flow. Uh, mm -hmm. It is essentially a simple conversation to help them recognize, hey, it looks like you don't have a clear plan in place. I would like to help you craft one so that you can and here are the benefits that people all want during this time while their doors are closed. I wanna help you sell from the safety and comfort of your own home virtually, just like we're doing right now in a Zoom video call. I want to help you still get booked appointments or requests for a visit or scheduled times to look at cars and have conversations with people from the safety and comfort of your own home and move them to a position of saying, yes, I want you to reserve something or take action now on something that I can buy now and bank for later and still take action where there is a financial transaction. In my industry, it's 50 to $200 deposits on a future uh, product or service that somebody's going to visit a medical spa for. Um, in an auto dealership, I would need to call up every single one of my offices or uh, dealerships that I work with right now and ask them the question, what are you doing? to generate cash while your doors are closed in the next 30 days and get feedback from them as they talk it out. Again, the solution that I crafted came from taking extremely diligent notes with every office that I worked with. Firstly, understanding their challenges and the language they use to define them. Again, my offices and our clients, we have no idea how we're gonna pay our bills. We have no idea how can we make money while our doors are closed. And the next solution came out of guided conversations that we had with them. And I'm going to address Jeff's uh, question right now because this is ultra relevant. Joan on behalf of Jeff or Jeff on behalf of Joan says, so you're doing an offer switch, right? Do you have slide decks behind that? Or is it just a Google slide setup or just a phone call? So I'm doing an offer switch. What I believe Jeff's question on behalf of Joan is asking is how do you get people to take action with you? on a completely different offer versus the done for you marketing that we do every single month for all the, the clients that we work with. The conversation is a very simple one. It starts from me entering that call, being more prepared with the right question to ask up front. What are you doing to generate cash over the next 30 days while your doors are closed? Naturally, we transition this process into, well, there is an opportunity to do virtual sales. Have you ever done them before? Have you ever taken somebody's payment over the phone? Have you ever had somebody pay for an appointment after they came in or before they came in, either in full or a deposit on file? 99% of our offices say, absolutely, we have. I say, great, hmm, I'm thinking. 
I don't know the first thing about running a brick and mortar medical spa or a brick and mortar business. Like I am not competent to do what you do. I'm not qualified to do what you do. However, in the last three and a half, four years that I've been in business, 100% of my business is operated virtually. I have a team of nine people. I've never met any of them except one, my business partner, in person, face to face. Every payment that we collect is done virtually. So people pay me on a Zoom call where I literally run their card on the call, collect payment, it hits my Stripe account, and then we move on to next steps with them or we end the call and send them steps that they need to take action on on their own. So Jeff, to answer your question, are you doing an offer switch? This is where I present a new offer to them. I say, and I reiterate that first question I had at the beginning of the call, Mr. Jeff, Mr. Johnson, let's use Jeff's language in his group, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, do you have a strategic plan in place to do this over the next 30 to 60 days? Pivot from offering in-person, uh, on-premise, on your brick and mortar location consultations like you were offering in the past and switching it to virtual consultations. Do you have a way to have video calls like this? Like some of our clients, they can't even spell Zoom. The idea of them doing virtual calls is totally foreign to them. Some are more advanced and they can do this like it's uh, second nature to them. Uh, other offices say now when we get to the, to the position of, hey, can you do a virtual consult and present uh, you know, before and after photos, uh, all the results that you've been able to deliver with everybody else you've ever worked with in the past. Do you have some sort of a presentation and a vehicle for people to see something? You know, I've always, I'm obviously, if I'm Dr. Nick, I'm going to look at Christine's skin if she's coming in for Botox or injectables and say, you know, you might need, you know, 10, 15 units in this small area here. The frown lines might need a little work here. Like if I were to look at myself, I got some major frown lines going on here. So I definitely need a whole lot of units. Uh, and then, you know, at the end of the call, do you have a proven repeatable process to ask for the same thing over and over, a deposit to buy now or lock in some special pricing right now, bank the service for later, and then actually come in and redeem that offer for that special pricing at a later date? Because this pricing is only eligible for people who take action right now, who purchase right now on a paid deposit, not in full, but a paid deposit and then come in at a later date to redeem it. So Jeff, that conversation flows very naturally. I don't necessarily need a slide deck or a pitch deck for it right now. Um, I will have a separate one crafted for it, but the reason that this logically uh, flows very well is because it's starting the conversation from, I'm a position of authority, I'm asking a, a direct question on how you're gonna generate cash for your business, and right now your response is, I have no idea. So when I linearly step through every challenge that they're going to have, okay, your doors are closed. How are you going to sell? Well, where are you going to be? Are you going to be at home? Okay. Are you going to have your computer at home? Are you going to have your phone? Got it. Are you going to be able to remotely connect with your team via phone, via Zoom video call? Okay, so you'll still communicate with them. Are you able to have conversations just like that with people who would otherwise see you face-to-face -face in your office, but doing it virtually? Hmm. Understood. So it looks like you have a challenge while your doors are closed. You can't see people face to face on premise, but could you see them face to face over a video call? Okay, got it. Instead of having 60 minute windows where those people come in and perhaps, you know, only take 10, 15 minutes for a consult and the rest of the 45 minutes is dead time because they're not willing to get started on the treatment immediately. What if we could pivot to 10 minute consults or 15 minute consults on your calendar that maybe you plus one or two technicians on your team handle where you shift to doing video virtual consultations where all you're going to do is send people the invitation to join that Zoom video call. Maybe you even call them on their cell phone so that they're literally using the same physical phone device that they need to be using to also then hop on that Zoom video call with you you're automatically sending them a link to a Zoom video call. You're sending them a link to a paid deposit form so that they literally have everything they need when you call them up and say, hey, Christine, it's 2 p.m. Central. I'm Dr. Nick, super excited to do your virtual consult. I've got you on the phone right now. Are you in a private, quiet place where we can do our virtual consult together? If the answer is yes, great. I sent you a link to join a Zoom video call. It's a one click, the app will download, and then our call will start immediately. In 30 seconds, you're gonna be seeing me on your phone screen. How cool is that? 
by the time the rest of that call has passed in 10, 15 minutes, if you have a proven process to present the offer or service or the series of offers or services that you want to present, if you have a proven process to collect a paid deposit, and then if you have a proven process to collect that date, the paid deposit and then schedule somebody for a follow-up and wash your hands of that whole interaction in under 15 minutes, is that something that you'd be interested and would you be interested in me helping you build that process out over the next five to six weeks? So what have we done? Obviously, there isn't somebody who's I can mirror uh, in a conversation and bounce <laughs> real responses back and forth. But you can imagine that structuring those questions in such a specific way helps them co-create a solution with you so that they can make money. They can pay their bills while their doors are closed. They can make money while their doors are closed. They can hit payroll. They can give meaningful work to do with their team. Now what I've also got is, hey, do you have somebody on your team who does your in-house marketing? Smaller offices will say, no, um, you're the only team that we work with. We've been loving the results we get for the six, 12, 18 months in the past. We've never hired anybody else to do anything else. Um, Mike Schneider, so good. James Rivers, love this. Shout out you guys. If you guys have anything else, Jeff Lopez, Nick is one of the most well-spoken people I've ever met. I love how you present things. Likewise to you, Jeff, I want more plus plus huddles. <laughs> um, that is the process that I would follow. And I think if we can like timestamp um, this live video and just have everybody go to that process and present that to every office that you work with, you will have to pivot and create an entirely new offer, that's for sure. But you come from a level of expertise and servitude, recognizing that I know that while your doors are closed, you need to have a completely different approach to getting results and getting cash flow. If you can't pay your team, you're not going to have a team to return when your doors do reopen. How do you keep them engaged right now? Hmm. So you have a marketing person on your team that is looking for something to do and hopefully uh, develop a skill set that can actually generate an extra three to $100,000 a month in your business. Have you been happy working with us thus far and uh, the results that we've been getting you? If they say no, well, damn. You suck as an agency. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You've got to pay more attention after this <laughs> epidemic, pandemic. Uh, you got to firstly get with Christine and David. Hashtag uh, shout out David and Christine. Um, what's the name of your group again, by the way? Getting Agency Automation Secrets. Mass. Marketing mas. Agency. Mass. Yo quiero mas. Mass. <laughs> Marketing <laughs> Agency automating, uh, Automation Secrets. Well, if your client gives you that type of feedback, hey, no, I don't want you to teach me how to do the shitty systems that you run for me right now. You need to end that call and then immediately call David and Christine so they can help you fix your stuff. Okay. If you have clients who are not happy with your results thus far, get on a call with David and Christine. If that conversation goes such a route where they say, Nick, I am happy with the results that we're getting thus far, you know, prior to the COVID <laughs> chaos, I would like to take this in-house. And the way that I present that is, you know, are you happy with the results that we're getting you thus far? And, um, you know, over the course of a year, it might, you might need to pay us 30 to $70,000 a month or a, a year to run, you know, the multiple systems that we run for you every single month. Um, I do have an option. If you have somebody who's highly dedicated on your marketing team and you would like to save 20 to $60,000 over the course of the year, I am coming up with a solution where I can train your team on how to do everything that we do ourselves. We've already got your Facebook ads manager set up. We've already got your funnel set up. You know that thing where people raise their hand and give their name, phone, and email and say, yes, I, I want this service, or I want to figure out what next steps are. Are you going to contact me? Am I going to contact you? Uh, and then you know that thing that you know, does that auto texting and the conversation starting tool high level? You know that thing? That's great, isn't it? Wouldn't it be great if I could have your team set up with everything they need to run all this for you and I hold their hand through the process for these next six to eight weeks to make sure that they're rocking and rolling and save you the cost of paying us to do this for you every single month? Is that a better option? Here's the beauty in having that sort of an upsell right now. If you're a digital advertising agency owner who is strapped for cash, you will be surprised how many business owners are not freaking out, are not panicking. Once you present, hey, I have a clear solution for you in place and I actually have 
multiple options. You can choose which option you want right now. You want my virtual sales coaching? Do you want my done with you marketing? Or do you want both of them for the big time package? And your leverage is pretty high because you're presenting a solution that addresses their immediate concerns, which are new and the sense of urgency is immediate. Number one, how the fuck am I gonna pay my team? How do I get cash? What we've also learned having these conversations is there are tertiary offers or other things and resources that every single office who works with us needs right now. For example, they need resources on how to reduce their rent. Um, there's a very popular one, shout out Jordan and Katie for definitely having this in their offer stack. Shout out uh, Alex Hermosi. I actually uh, realized he was uh, serving a whole lot of gym owners who are recognizing that their challenge is now to cover their lease or their monthly rent for their uh, gym or the, the salon or the space that they have every single month. Uh, he crafted a rent reduction letter, which is just, you know, I've fallen on hard times or due to the economy, I do need a little bit of financial support. Like, can you delay my payment? Can you reduce my payment? Can I play a, pay a split payment now and offer uh, the rest of that payment later? Um, other feedback that we've gotten from offices, they actually need to get a loan. So if you can ever connect somebody who is in dire need of a loan and you can connect them with a loan officer or somebody who offers cash now, you'd be amazed at how much your clients love you. And again, whether or not that's what they need right now, having this conversation proactively is going to build such a strong rapport with them where we get off of calls right now and the response that we're getting from our clients is like, we really love you guys and we love the fact that you're actually giving a damn about where we're at right now. So great and awesome uh, advice, really appreciate it. James, love this, Mike, so good. Uh, Joan, I think your question might have gotten grayed out. If you wanna maybe try re-asking it, but guys, let me know um, if that makes any sense. If you like any of that, um, please comment something below, like just a, a simple yes. Like, yes, this makes sense. Yes, I can get on the phone with my client and ask the one question, like what are your exact steps in place that you're going to generate cash? over the next 30 days, like you've heard me re-ask that and reframe it uh, multiple times on this call, but you need to get comfortable coming in and asking a very direct question right off the bat. What's your game plan to generate cash over the next 30 days, six weeks, eight weeks, and let your client recognize how unprepared they actually are right now to deal with their most immediate challenge, which is my doors are closed. I run a $180,000 per month business that's reliant on people walking through my doors every single day for the next six weeks and indefinitely, I don't have a solution in place. Does that make sense? I see a couple of questions from Joan. Christine, you were gonna add something as well? Yeah, I was just gonna ask you, uh, going back to your comment on pivoting toward teaching them how to sell online like we do, um, are you continuing to advertise on Facebook uh, different promotions and offers with the intent of getting them on a, on a video call or did you have to change your offer stack completely? It's a great question. I'm gonna give a two-part response. Um, people need a little bit of a mindset reframe for this first response when the question is, does it make sense to advertise right now? Specifically, does it make sense to pivot over to offering virtual consultations so that you actually can serve your community and serve them at the highest level? This is the number one objection that you're getting right now from every office who does run a brick and mortar location and it has active ads and is getting negative feedback and comments on those ads with people saying something like, oh, Christine, you, you horrible person. Your doors are open right now. You're letting people walk in. You're, you're spreading the coronavirus. Like it's people like you who are killing our society. You know, some of our offices are getting negative feedback like that on some of their ads. And just so everybody is aware, um, there are people who comment ignorant, stupid stuff, uh, no matter what type of offer you're promoting. <laughs> you know, in our case, in body contouring, in the world of offering like cool sculpting and skin tightening. What's up, Jared? What's up, Andrew? What's up, Scott? I'll get to your questions in just a second. Uh, we always have people who give negative and sensitive feedback. I'll give you a feedback that we learned very early in the game. We used to run ads for body contouring and show a, an image of a woman and run that ad set to both men and women. Guess where the ignorant comments came from and how ignorant the comments were? 
there are some pretty uninformed men out there with some pretty lowbrow comments. So what we've learned is we don't necessarily see negative feedback or negative comments like this as a detriment to us. Rather, we see it as something that increases engagement. And this gives every office the opportunity to take the high road and educate that ignorant person. Because a savvy, smart, wise, rational person is going to see that, is going to see the comment, and you're just building instant credibility with them saying, oh, okay, you know, Dr. Nick had this stupid comment on his Facebook ad, and then Dr. Nick himself came in and actually educated the person and took the high road and said, you know, I love your objection. Here's uh, what we're doing to generate amazing results for men and women in the area. Would love for you to schedule a consult if you or somebody else you know would be a good fit for this. We need to reframe our client's mindset when it comes to pulling back and retreating versus leaning in and investing and capitalizing on opportunity. I think every office right now is, if they are struggling to pay their bills, they're panicking not so much because they are fearing that they won't have enough cash on hand to pay their bills. Rather, they're panicking and they're struggling because they don't have clarity in place. They really have absolutely no plan and no concrete next steps. So in addition to presenting concrete next steps, you need to also let people know how is this going to make you money and also why you should invest right now while others are retreating. I will give you a concrete example. San, uh, sorry, California was, I think, one of the first states to uh, announce either a lockdown or a shutdown of non-essential businesses within the last like seven to 12 days. We have seen a number of our offices request to pause and we honored that. Not every office is gonna say, hey, let's pivot to virtual consults. Um, not every office who we signed in the last two weeks is saying, um, hey, let's go live with our systems right now. I'd rather pull back and pause things for now. But the conversation that we're having on every phone uh, call with them or Zoom video call with them is number one, we're asking the question again and just agitating this pain point. How are you going to generate cash in the next 30 days? And when you start the conversation from there and they realize that they don't have a plan in place, suddenly your plan of saying, let's keep your done for you ads going, but let's pivot to a virtual consult. That's, linear, that's solving lin linearly their very first immediate problem. How do we keep cash flowing in? The second problem that we expose, again, linearly, we solve one problem and then we expose another problem. You know, we solve a problem, then we expose another. This is what David and Christine help agency owners recognize every single day. You solve their lead generation problem, then you recognize we have a conversation starting problem. We don't have a tool in place that starts the conversation between the agents, uh, the business owner and the lead. And then when we recognize, well, we have a tool that starts conversations, but we can't get people to book, then they need a new solution. Well, then we recognize that we get people who book, but those people no show. Then we've exposed another problem. We've solved one linearly and we've exposed another. Then we get people showing up and they're financially qualified or they're not financially qualified. Well, we expose that we now have a problem. We're getting the wrong people in their doors. Uh, then we say, you know, we've got people who are showing up, but they're not buying and they're financially qualified. Then we've exposed another problem that you have internally in your office. So what we're doing linearly is the same conversation that we've had, been having with our offices when we offer done for you, but instead of offering done for you as the final solution, to their problems. Now we're presenting, you need cash flow, and you need consults coming in, and you need to do it virtually, but you don't know how to spell Zoom, and you don't know how to collect deposits. Is that correct? Is that what you're telling me? If I gave you 30 booked appointments right now over the next 72 hours, and I gave you a full calendar of virtual consults, what would you do? Crickets. Yep. Who would handle it? Mm -hmm. Who's going to collect the payment, and how are you going to do it? Having this structured conversation, and uh, again, being as proactive and addressing it up front when you re ultimately recognize and you both come to terms, so you don't have a plan in place. Is that correct? Got it. Let me ask you another question. You're linearly going through this process of what challenges are they going to have. My goal is to shift everybody to virtual appointments and going through this process. And what I'm also educating people on is, look, this is actually something that people are going to want after this pandemic and this scare is over. Uh, you wouldn't believe how much more convenient it is for me to just do a five, 10 minute virtual consult with you, the doctor, you, the technician, the esthetician, the nurse practitioner on a video call from the comfort of my own home and recognize that I am or am not a good fit for this. The only thing that the office really needs to change is instead of having that first touch point be a simple phone call, it's now done via video. And guess what? Building that rapport over video 
it makes it a whole lot easier to collect a paid deposit and present to people, hey, I gave you this pitch deck, like I, I showed you the royal before and after photos that we're getting. We with high level, Christine, we've learned that in the medical spa space, you know, Botox and injectables and high ticket body contouring, it sells itself. The challenge is you didn't give every person who is a lead for that office, you didn't give them every single bit of proof they need to know that before they even walk through the doors, they've made a decision, which is yes. They need mm -hmm. to see your before and after photos. They need to see your five-star reviews and they need to see them repeatedly. They need to see that uh, you offer pricing and you offer a range of pricing so that they know whether or not they're financially qualified. This has started from the marketing conversation in the ads that should always mention, you know, there's a range to these services. You don't advertise a free consult because free is a dog whistle for broke people to see ads, click on them and then no show and mm -hmm. just piss off your office. So don't ever advertise anything for free. If there's Please no don't. price, there's no price attached to something. Don't explicitly say it's free. Say we're just there's a consultation. Don't overemphasize the language of free because that attracts the wrong people. Mm -hmm. So linearly, I have now exposed mm -hmm. multiple problems. Number one, while your office is closed, you can't serve people face to face. Number two, while your office is closed, you can't collect people's money because you're not serving them face to face. Well, what if we go to the root cause issue and say, while your doors are closed, what if you could serve people virtually? Can you have conversations with people on a Zoom video call just like the one we're having right now, Dr. Christine? Okay, great. Do you have a method in place to consult or present the types of results that you can generate with your service that again, they're not gonna be able to take action on immediately, but your goal is to incentivize them to take action by the end of this call by presenting some special pricing that's available only on these virtual consults and only for people who put down a non-refundable deposit now. What is going to happen is a lot of offices are going to suddenly learn that they have a new mechanism to serve more people and to better serve them faster and in tighter succession on shorter appointments in a more condensed period of time. So now a no-show in their office isn't a painful 60-minute calendar time that got blocked out and then that esthetician is sitting around with their hands their chin in their hand like trying to figure out what they should be doing for the remainder of that appointment now they're 10 15 minute appointments they're quick and fast and if somebody no shows you have a list of people that you can contact and say hey i'm free right now like who wants to join this zoom video call blasted the first person to join closed off now they're in a waiting room so now check this out. Now you've got people waiting in your virtual consultation waiting room. Cool. How cool would that be? If you have multiple people who can serve in your office, they could see, hey, there are three people waiting to join this meeting. I'm going to take David Murillo because that dude sounds like he needs a nose job. I work with plastic surgeons, David, if you ever need the hookup. Um, That's so funny. What do you think about that, Christine? I'm going to read back into some of the comments here. Yeah. Um, I was just going to steal Jeff's. Uh, That's pretty darn cool. I love it. And I don't know, like, who would say no to that, you know, mm -hmm. even if they're old school. The fact that you're opening it with how are you going to generate revenue in the next 45 days? I yeah. don't know. That's like their oh crap moment. Yeah. I need a plan. Exactly. What I would suggest, and this is a great question from all of Joan, Andrew, and James regarding cold outreach. I'll address that one in a second. Um, Scott asked a fantastic question. Are your clients, patients, are still spending money right now? Are your clients, patients still spending money right now? Oh, I think that I think what he meant to, to frame is, uh, do the people who come into your office, like, do they still have money to spend? Well, the financially qualified ones certainly do. I mean, people have a savings. They know that if they can get this service now or later, like they're still going to be a good fit for it. You know, some people might be a little money tight right now, but absolutely. Like there certainly are people who are showing up and buying for a number of our offices who've decided not to close their doors. And we've already seen offices shift to a virtual deposit methodology where if, if they don't have the cash to invest in a full on treatment right now, the $50 deposit is perfect. It locks in their spot for a later date. I want to address Jones and everybody else's question that uh, is phrased fantastically. Doing a cold email campaign for realtors, but all my yeses I call back right now turned into freaking out mode and don't want to spend a dollar. I've already offered help with high level auto follow up as a down sell and LinkedIn connection campaigns, but everybody seems like they just want to wait till this is over 
before spending any money. Any thoughts on this? Yes, definitely. Andrew asked, how would you approach this situation in regards to cold emailing for new clients? James asked, similarly, how do you update your cold outreach over LinkedIn cold emails? In order to you get those that are wanting to pull back, it would normally be a yes to your outreach methods. It's really rooted in that very first conversation starter that you're having with them. So Joan's question is something that is tougher to address downstream when you get people who are hopping on calls and saying like, I don't want to spend any money right now. If you are asking this conversation and phrasing this up front, what's your strategic plan in the next 45 days to generate cash flow? The conversation becomes much easier. And I think this is aligning with something that we are shifting to with our cold email. Uh, not enough data to recognize an improvement yet. But if you are transparent in your cold email and you are asking people, hey, are your doors open right now? I wanted to know not only if people can come in for consults right now, face-to-face, -face, on, on location, on premise. Can people walk through your doors? But also, what is your strategic plan to offer virtual consults if people wish to do a consultation virtually? Do you have a plan in place to collect paid deposits from people performing or from people who opt in for a virtual call over the next 30 days? I would try variations of that question over and over and over to your niche. Because if you ask a simple question like that, that instantly connects with their most immediate and urgent pain that needs to be resolved, suddenly the barrier drops quite a bit. Because now you're coming to them and asking a question which almost nobody has an answer for. You need to then hop on that call and ask that question again, reiterate it, and then provide clarity on next steps. And what you should be doing right now is you should be having that conversation with every client you already serve to practice it and get a better understanding of their pain points. Because the more you talk to your existing clients, the more data you're going to get, the better you understand their problem, the better you can not just craft a solution, but relay. I understand here's where you're at right now with this existing problem. We need to have next steps to figure out what we can do to get you to a goal, which is to not have to worry about paying bills, to not have to worry how you're gonna make money while your doors are closed, to not worry about how you're trying to uh, process payroll. Does that make sense? And do you like anything in particular about this idea where we're presenting an option for you to still collect money while your doors are closed, still pay your bills and have cash flow to pay your rent and pay your team? We are now more expert and authoritative on their next steps than they are. But the beauty is, and this is what Jeff Miller does so well with a lot of his clients that he has, you know, pivoted his offer to after the Facebook ads and the wallet out button, the seat campaign doesn't work in the first one month, two months, three months, whenever. Now we're finding their next problem that they're having and we are presenting a more well-crafted and structured offer to solve that problem and connect a dollar driven solution to it, which means I'm going to have virtual consults. They're going to be shorter. They're going to be paid deposits. And now I don't have to worry about having an empty calendar when I do reopen my doors. This is all rooted back to those offices who are retreating and pulling back right now are going to screw themselves and lose out on market share while other offices who are coming up with virtual consultations, who are putting a game plan in place to collect deposits, they're going to be the ones that your clients and your prospective clients and patients are ultimately gonna to go to because they're being proactive right now while you're pulling back. Never been a better time to advertise right now. I know this is very cliche for a lot of people to hear at this stage, but like I'm seeing new ads from niches and offers that I've never seen before because the people who were occupying my brain space or my, uh, my screen, like they've now pulled back and they've stopped advertising. Yeah. Others have taken the lead and they've ramped it up. I bought something on Facebook ads for like the first time in my like last 12, 18 months the other day. I bought, I bought a physical product. Like it, it, it now is the time to capitalize this. I would love to uh, get feedback from everybody else. And uh, Christine, I'm going to go through some comments here. But I mean, what do you think about that? Is that a relevant conversation to have even with your agency owners? Like, yeah. can you figure out new ways to serve other agency owners who are struggling to figure out, well, what do I do to serve my clients and get more clients and keep them and charge them more? Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, we just, we got the objection the other day, like, I can't move forward because of coronavirus, you know? And so well, what we're plan getting... do you have in place to generate, generate cash over the coming weeks? Ultimately, yeah. that objection is an easy one to handle mm -hmm. because they're going to spell out the fact that I don't have anything. 
Yeah. If somebody is consistently saying that I need to wait, sit and wait while this Corona thing blows over, you need to be asking the direct question. What's up, Simon? What's up, Danny? Danny, you need to ask every microblading experts, every brow expert in uh, California and everywhere else that you serve them. Hey, I understand that you're, you're panicking and you just want to wait until this coronavirus thing blows over. I get it. Well, let me ask you what I can help you with in the meantime. What is your plan? What's your game plan to generate cash every day over the next 30 to 45 days while your doors are closed? They can't articulate a plan because they don't even know what they need yet. They're even having a hard time articulating their problem, which is why it's our responsibility as people who can serve. Like, we're damn good at what we do. Like, our clients actually love us because we're even on months where the leads bomb, they understand that we're delivering so much value and we're there for them and we're over communicating with them during a time of crisis. Like, mm-hmm. they're not abandoning this company that was that was there for them in their most dire time of need and who helped them get clarity on, I now figured out what my challenge is and I didn't even think I could do virtual consults. I didn't even think I could collect $50 every 15 minutes sitting at my home in my couch with no pants on. Hopefully if you're a professional, you're wearing pants when you are doing your virtual consultations with your patients and clients. But if you're not having that proactive conversation um, with your existing clients and then on your prospective sales calls, you need to change that immediately. Um, Mm -hmm. We're three for three. I'm getting positive feedback on this from the last three clients that we presented. Now they, granted, they are a good fit. Swap Mill says, yo, Nick, great interview. Thanks for sharing. Dude, long time, no chat, man. Good to see you back in November at Jeff's Jeff's Master Astermind. Uh, Can't wait to see you again, man. Congrats on having a big month. I think uh, within the last few weeks, you had a fantastic little breakthrough there. So I think congrats, man. Hopefully that wasn't as long ago as like December or January. Hopefully it was more recent, like February, March. But um, so, Nick, do you mind if I ask you another question real quick? I do not mind. Um, okay, so going back to what you said about pivoting to virtual consults, super, super genius, 300 level IQ, as my 16-year-old likes to say. Mm-hmm. Um, are you advertising uh, in your ads that it's a virtual console, are you advertising a different offer or, or what, how, how do you get around, you know, the objections up front? Where do you live right now? Kansas City? I live in Wichita. Hey, Wichita, Christine here with Christine's Med Spa. And in times like these, we're doing something amazing to support our community and bring ourselves together. We are genuinely looking to serve everyone who's still interested in Botox, Nutox, Xeomin, and we've got some special pricing for people who want to reserve a spot to get Botox at only, let's just say $7.99 per unit. Here's the deal. Actually, let me just uh, share my screen and craft uh, uh, and showcase the message that we posted in our uh, private and in our public group. Oh, wow, okay, yeah, that'd be awesome. That actually has this. And again, I think everybody's, fire, guys. Ooh, yeah. I think everybody just needs to have more conversations with their clients and get back to um, understanding their problems very clearly and then communicating very clearly that you have a solution. So this is just one example that we will model for uh, virtual consults. I'm going to screenshot this. Actually, let me. Uh, Do you think we should make you. them ask for it? I like, think if they want the script after this call, um, give us a <laughs> hashtag uh, virtual, virtual, hashtag virtual, and we'll share this with you after the call. But our goal here is to position the offer and the idea itself from an angle of servitude. So in times like these, we want to be leaders and do something special to strengthen our economy and honestly, to help my, you know, Nick's medical spa employees stay busy while offering something we've never done before, special pricing. So we can serve you as best as possible at a reduced price, even while our doors are closed. We're offering a buy now bank for later this. So here's the simple offer, but here's the deal. I can't imagine somebody turning down and having a negative feedback to something like this when the angle that we're coming from is, but here's the deal. We're only offering the special pricing to people who click below and actually show up to a virtual consultation. Mm -hmm. And also, because while everybody else is not keen 
on presenting pricing. Everybody else is not keen on presenting upfront that every office is going to request a deposit, some form of like collateral to make sure that they're only offering this to people who are serious. Just let people know this. Like this is not gonna freak people out. This is coming from an angle of servitude. It's coming from an angle of like, I get it, you know, social distancing sucks. While you're trapped in your house, we're still doing something amazing to help every woman in the area who wants to get rid of fine lines, wrinkles, and whatever. So we're offering something very special. Until April 15th, you know, we're offering a buy now, bank for later offer for this. But here's the deal. We're only offering this for people who actually click below schedule a time and actually show up to our 20-minute virtual consultation. And I want you to be aware, if you attend our consult and you qualify for pricing, we will ask for a paid deposit to lock in your special pricing until we meet face-to-face -face for your service in April, May. That's awesome. It doesn't need to be this radically challenging process to get people to recognize, <clears throat> I have a big time gap right now. I'm gonna make zero dollars in the next month if I don't do something. Your responsibility is to structure that conversation in such a way so the business owner recognizes that. Then present, mm -hmm. you don't have to have a finished solution right now, but you need to present that linearly you understand where their challenges are right now. It's number one, not getting people through your doors anymore, but it's just getting people interested and serving them in a way that doesn't require a face-to-face -face visit. Next, it's how do you collect cash from it? Well, there's a process that they've got to follow now, which is a little different. Have you ever, let me ask you this, Dr. Christine, have you ever done a virtual consultation before? Have you ever sold on a virtual consultation before? I appreciate your feedback. I'm somebody who has no idea how to sell face-to-face -face in a brick and mortar location just like you do. But if you remember back in the day, I took your freaking money on a Zoom video call. So oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, I'm saying? Like, I, got, I know how to do this. I does this. Like I can take money on Zoom video calls. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but genuinely, we're presenting, hey, I know how to sell online. In fact, I've never sold face-to-face -face in my entire life. I've never pitched in front of people. I've never... Uh, you know, done a one-on-one -on -one consultation with somebody and ask them to pull out their wallet and give me anything. But I do recognize you have a challenge here. I am an expert at selling online. I think it's fair for me to say that at this stage and I can help you. I do have a program for this. It's fluid. Um, the easiest thing to do is just say, look, we're going to take six weeks, one hour a week, and maybe some homework outside of those one hour calls where I'm just going to help you stand up the exact system that I've got to send Zoom meeting links, to hop on virtual calls, uh, a link where we can collect a paid deposit. It's the exact same process over and over. You're not doing custom dollar amounts that you're charging people. You're not sending them PayPal invoices. You're not sending them QuickBooks invoices. You're just saying, great, if you're ready for this, I just need the number. I'm gonna run it right now, spots locked in, and then we're gonna decide what time you want in April. If we need to push it back due to circumstances that are outside our control where we can't open our doors, don't worry, we're gonna push it back. This is how we need to shift the conversations with our brick and mortar locations moving forward. And I think that conversation and that template, watch this over and over again until you find language that is relevant for your niche, but ultimately start having conversations with people that start, well, what are you gonna to do to generate cash while your doors are closed over the next six days? Danny, we need a master class. <laughs> David just replied to Danny. I don't know what Danny said in here, but I don't, I don't know about that. Uh, I think we're winding down. I think people are kind of dropping off here, but that's, uh, yeah. that's it in a nutshell. And also we're doing everything we can to compile every free resource to send to people who are not yet in our world that are not yet paying clients and start the conversation with them. Still saying the same thing, which I highly encourage everybody who's doing cold email find a way to include that language. Or if you have a VA or you're doing your cold email, use a new opening subject line and question for half of your um, emails and then use something like, what are you doing in the next 30 days to generate new booked appointments? Or I'm sorry, to generate cash flow. I ask because I'm concerned that a lot of the offices we already work with who don't offer virtual consults and know how to collect paid deposits are going to generate zero cash until their doors open and I wanted to hop on a call and see if we could talk about a solution that might be a better fit. Oh, damn it. Can we record that? Can, we I tag my, can I tag my VA and like, that's our new, uh, that's our new subject line. 
yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. somebody comment what time it is on this video because I want to go back and and steal that. Oh, what it would be at one four one thirteen ish. Yeah, that's over that an was hour. Fire. That's an oh, that's over an hour of real like solid actionable advice. I know, guys, are you happy with this? Come on now, give us some likes, give us some hearts. Nick likes hearts up in here, so give us some hearts and- I like, I like dance emojis too. Dance emojis, I like dance emojis too. Dance emojis are the best. I really uh, genuinely hope that everybody is coming from an angle of servitude for their offices over the coming weeks, mm -hmm. because the worst thing you can do is hard pitch a new offer without going deep on understanding their exact problems right now because now is the time to radically transform your approach to understanding your existing clients and future clients problems you will get so much uh, respect from your clients and your future clients when you come prepared to ask that question do you have a game plan in place to generate money and if you don't you're asking the right questions to linearly help them solve each individual problem step by step. Now that one simple dynamic changed, my doors are closed and then everything else goes to shit and I have no clarity on what to do next. Mm -hmm. Start practicing this with your existing clients. Go from the angle of servitude. Uh, Swap no loved it. Thank you, Nick, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yamil, so great. Awesome, you guys start asking these questions and you're going to have such an advantage over every office, every other agency owner who is not taking these specific action steps because your old offer was, is no longer relevant for probably 80% of the working USA right now, whether they have a brick and mortar business or not. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're in a recession proof industry, there's a big chance that your uh, scope of your offer needs to change dramatically. You can still do done for you services like we're all probably doing for our clients, lead generation but you might need to pivot one or two elements of that. The offer might yeah. need to change. So I genuinely hope everybody who uh, watched this got a lot of value. Looks like uh, we're wrapping up here. I think Anybody so, else? yes. Um, and Nick, I just wanna say thank you so, so much for, for spending your precious time and your brain power on presenting this to our group. I know I got a lot of value out of it. I'm going to be using this exact thing with my clients and yep. I'm excited to do that and be proactive about it. Uh, also, do you have like something that you would like to give to everyone who watched this or um, any kind of lead magnet or anything like that? How about, uh, I don't have anything people can opt into. I'd love to just okay. give people what they need. Uh, how about two things, Christine, that we can send out to everybody who joined and you can compile this as your lead magnet. Uh, number one, the virtual consults uh, text script, or I'm sorry, the, the virtual consults template. I'll just make a list of this as well. If you do need to pivot um, one of your offices over to virtual consults, you can follow this framework. Um, the number one question to ask, and then I think we came up with actually a, uh, a template that's worth testing for the cold email. Why don't we do a cold email script? Perfect. Virtual consults offer sheet. Or I'm sorry, a virtual consults template. The number one question to ask every single one of your clients and prospective clients, every call that you get on, no matter whether you serve them or not yet serve them. And then the cold email subject and opening message. That, that we would need be to start testing. Yeah, that'd be great. What hashtag do you want them to give if they want that? If you want virtual consults, if you want a number one question, if you want a cold email template to use, you need to give us the hashtag, uh, the Yas Queen one. I like that one. Um, <laughs> yes, queen. Let's do hashtag, uh, hashtag, uh, I say let's just do hashtag virtual. I have much okay. more creative ones in my head, but uh, I don't think those are appropriate for the, <laughs> the world at large. <laughs> we got to keep it PG or at least PG-13. I think hash, hashtag virtual, um, everybody okay. who comments hashtag virtual is going to get follow-up from Christine or David. Um, we're going to actually go compile these resources for you guys right now. It's the template for uh, shifting your offices to virtual consults, so at the very least, 
um, you can present people with something like, hey, you know, here's a template that I'm already using from my other offices or that has been proven. Um, we can model and make it work. Uh, the number one question that you need to ask every single one of your clients and um, your prospective clients. And then uh, the cold email template. I think that's a lot. That's uh, a lot. Right there. That's a lot of value, guys. I see a lot of people doing hashtag virtual. So awesome. Awesome. Uh, hey, are. hey, Chris, I see you. Hey, James. Hey, Lenny. Hey, Marilyn. Oh, cool. Swappy. <laughs> cool. Cool. Everyone wants dancing it. Dancing emoji. David gave the dancing emoji. Dancing I was craving, emoji. craving so heavily. <laughs> Not so much an emoji, but a hashtag. Cool. Awesome, Scott. Thank you, Swap. Yamil, James, Darren. Uh, my comments won't go up further than that. So hopefully everybody got a lot of value on it. But I would immediately get all your clients on the phone that you haven't spoken with in the last few days and start asking that question right now. You Absolutely. just need to be as proactive as possible. You need to be more, more proactive than they are because you'll mm -hmm. recognize like they haven't done a damn thing. They haven't planned. They've just been panicking. They've been paralyzed by fear. Yep. You need to be the one who's presenting a solution. For sure. Address the issue with the correct question and then have a linear conversation where you solve problem after problem and watch the money come in. Love you support it. it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Nick. You're amazing. Keep crushing it. Guys, go take action on this right now. Go do it. Okay. Hashtag act now. Hashtag social distancing. Yep. <laughs> We'll see you guys tomorrow. We've got uh, Mr. Plus Plus, Jeff Lopez coming on to talk about how they're keeping their clients with Josh Sinners. And also we're about to hit 400 members in our group already. Hey, hey so thanks to Nick for helping us push to the 400 mark as well. Uh, love you guys and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. See you, Jamil. See you, Simon. Long time no chat, Mr. Simon. Hope you all loved that. Boom. Bye.